Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here in Dubai it's the morning after your fight, TJ Duhenny. Uh, tough one to take, I'd imagine, going. Absolutely devastated. Sitting at the top of the rankings, ready to walk into a world title fight or even a unification fight. We only spoke about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Akhmat Aliyev, I'm talking about Danny Roman, I'm talking about all these big names in the division. Then they're going to put in a piss poor performance like that. And you know, if there's there are just part, there's parts in that fight where, where you can look at and you can argue that, that could be a, a controversial decision. But at the end of the day, it was a shit performance. A guy like that shouldn't even shouldn't have, have even been a close fight for me, you know. But um, yeah, I just wanted to I just wanted to come on and just say like um, that I'm, I I will be back. I've had a good chat with with MTK this morning. Everything's positive. They get me straight back on the horse. We're gonna we're gonna have two quick fights. Get me back into back into contention, and then we're gonna push on from there again. The loss last night gives me a little bit of a setback um, because we were going straight into something big after this win. That will the win that last night was setting me up for something big but um, now it sets me back I've got to probably take another fight or two to get me back into contention again you know but um, at the end of the day a loss like that doesn't doesn't um, it's not a gauge on how talented I am I'm not faded I'm not finished it was just a it was just a bad um, a bad performance a horrible style to come up against it was an eight rounder against a guy that likes to box and move I was just getting to him, you could see he was gassed after five rounds, but obviously the mind, his mindset would have been, I've only got three rounds to go, I'm just going to just, mm -hmm. and you could see him, he was just flapping, and uh, I was getting to him, I was digging to the body, maybe I could have sh scored a few more headshots, but I was going to the body more because I was trying to break him down, I'm a 12 round fighter, yeah. and I know I know how to get, get to lads, and you know, I, I reckon if it was a 12 round fight, he would have been out by 10 or 11, because he was, he was, he was gone. But again, he was he was scoring these silly little punches and moving, and you know there were there were clear punches to the judges where I was working on the inside, and maybe they weren't they weren't as eye catching for the judges. Referee wouldn't let me work on the inside, and um, I don't mean I don't mean to be making up 101 excuses. I think if that fight was in America, I would have got the decision because of my because of my um, my inside work, my body work. And I was doing the more effective work, but he was just nipping me with clearer punches. Mm. And it's kind of like, I don't know where the judges for, were from, but European judges like to see that kind of stuff. They, you know, the clearer punches to the head, they don't, they don't read the whole um, aspect of, what, of what's going on in the fight. The referee just would not let us fight in the inside. Every time we got the inside and I went to rumble, whoa, break, yeah. and it was, oh, I was, and that kind of got me frustrated. That's why I tossed him to the ground which I shouldn't have, it was bad sportsmanship, but it was just because, just when I got on the inside, I was like, right, here we go. The next week, referee was stepping in, and that's where I would, I would have been rumbling, I was trying to get him to the body and then come up to the head. That was that was kind of the plan. Started to freeze him at the body and go to the head then, you know? But um, look, he had a good little game plan, he was dancing around and just picking me off. But um, again, I just I'm putting it down to it was an eight round fight, and it just wasn't long enough. He had the mentality. He he was he was going at round five, but it, it, his mindset he would have been like, I've only got three rounds Survive. to go here. Let's yeah. go, you know. But if that'd be a twelve round fight, he would have just faded and faded and faded, mm. and I would have got him out there because I was starting to nail him with some good solid shots. But yeah, I just I just wanted to say like you know because I've. I feel like a dickhead after being sitting up talking to you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Akma Daliyev, Roman, Eddie, that's getting me this Are you fight. sort of like looking, I don't want to sound disrespectful, but you sort of like looking past this kid last night onto, maybe that's why you took your eye off the ball a little bit maybe? I was thinking about it this morning. I was thinking, did I overlook him? Mm. I don't think I did because of the way I, the way I trained for the fight. The only, the only thing I did different was I didn't do my training camp with my head coach, Hector Bermudez. Um, I, did, I did my camp in America, so I pretty much just got in shape and did some sparring, but I didn't have Hector in my ear. Mm. And Hector's one of the best coaches in the world, but I didn't, ha didn't have him in my ear. So when I was sparring and doing stuff, I was doing what I wanted to do rather than the tasks that he yeah, yeah. Hector gets me to do and puts me behind the eight ball all the time. He's constantly got me working. So 
maybe I got a little too comfortable in, in, in my training camp, even though I was in great shape, you could see eight round I could have went another four, no problem. But um I wouldn't I wouldn't say I overlooked them, but I was kind of because I have in my head that I want I want to be a unified I have in my head that I want to be a unified world champion again. So that's kind of my number one mindset but I should have really been just focused on getting the win last night starting a little slow you know forgetting I'm completely not thinking about that this is an 8 round fight you have to start from the mm. first bell because if you've got 1, 2, 3 rounds down or even you start losing rounds the fight starts becoming close you know mm. and um, yeah it's just it's just it's just devastating it's going to take me a little bit to get, to get over it but uh, I'll be straight back in the gym because Honestly, I'm one of the hardest workers in boxing. I'm in the gym day in, day out, week in, week out. I'm always working on my craft. And last night was just, it was just a bad night. And that's the only thing I could put it down to. Everybody has them. And it just so happened to me last night. I just came up against an absolutely horrible style, a terrible matchup. And a kid that was coming up, coming up against a former world champion. So he's G'd up for it, like, mm. you know. He didn't come to take a knee. He came to... You know, he came to get his name out there. It's a good scalp for him. Yeah, it's a good it? scalp for him, and that's what he was seeing. And he was having some success. And this is what happens when you're in against lower-level guys. If they start landing shots, they start getting confident, and he started to shine a little. And then he started getting a little, a little slicker. And he, he was happy enough then just scoring and moving, and that was frustrating me a little. And I was just trying to get close to him. Every time I tried to get close to him, he was scurrying around the ring. But um, I think, I, I, I do feel, if that had to be in um, in America with, with with different kind of judges and a referee that would have let me let us rumble on the inside, you know, it was literally every time we got close, it would break. It was, like, was that the frustration that played part when you threw him to the yeah, ground? Yeah, because it's like let let me fight. Mm. I could have broke him down on the inside, you know. That's that's kind of my game, you know. I kind of box long early, and then I'm, as the rounds roll on, I get into a rhythm. And then I get close to you, and then I, I'll, I'll start working the body and working the head, and you know they fade, you know. But mm. look, I could go on about it all day, and I could make up excuses all day. I'm just gonna have to take this loss in the chin. I've had a good chat, good good chat with the team, as I said already, and we've already got a plan in place. I'm gonna get two quick fights, two quick succession, get me straight back into contention, and hopefully, um, set, it's, it's gonna set me back a few months to where. But the goal hasn't changed in terms of fighting that Medelliev and getting the rematch for Danny Roman. The goal hasn't changed. It's all about just repositioning. Mm. And they have to look at the caliber of fighter I am. It was just it just wasn't my night last night. And um not nothing changes. So just um all it is is that I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more patient and it's gonna take me like probably an extra six months to get get the fights that I want that I want to come June, July. But you've done the right thing. I think the fact that you've given me this interview also, shows the sort of mindset you've, you've got. The championship mindset. You're, uh, you're going to brush it under the carpet type thing. Take it as a man. Like you said yourself, take it on the chin. It's going to set you back. And boy, obviously you've dropped down a few rungs now, but the goal hasn't changed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're still wanting them big fights. But in terms of this fight, have you learned from this fight in, in the way that you can't take your eye off the ball here and you've got to start yeah. fast if you need to you've got to put on a performance and, and start fast in an 8 round fight because you're a 12 round fighter you've fought 12 rounds the last yeah. 20 fights oh, I've been fighting 12 rounds since my 5th fight exactly and I've had a couple of 8 in between here and there like you know but even if you look at my last 8 rounder when the first bell I was just going to break him down and I got him mm. out 5 uh, he retired I think he retired after the 5th but um, yeah look it's, it's down to this the loss doesn't mean that oh my career is over or that I'm gone and finished and done or oh, that's that that's the end of Donny. No, it's not. It was an off night. I'm still a world class fighter. Mm. I'm still in my head. I'm still in the. I'm I'm in the top five in the Ring Magazine rankings and I'm still there. I just had an off night and I took a loss. I had to take it on the chin and just reset and re go again. And that's why I wanted to do. That's why I wanted to do this interview because I don't want to look like a, an asshole talking about the best fighters in the division and then going in and putting in a performance like that last night. It was an off night, brush it under the carpet, we reset with Rigo and uh, I'll be back and I'll be back before you know it. Two quick fights this year and hopefully this there time next year. Two quick fights before, before August, September and then hopefully a big one by the end of the year. 
that was the conversation this morning. So please, God, the stars align and everything works out. And um, um, and again, yeah, I will. I will be back. I will be back. Well, see, like I said, appreciate you taking the time out yeah. to give me this interview. No bother at all. You said your piece. I know how emotional you were last night in the dressing room. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's obviously raw coming out of the ring. So oh, it was horrible. I know you, <laughs> you were heartbroken, mate. But listen, you, you said yourself, you still got that, that champion's yeah. mentality in your head. It's only set you back six months. So going forward, all the best to you, mate. Yeah. BMTK are going to look after you. Know. Yeah, the, yeah. The, no, they're, great, like, they're so. great guys, and you know they're all about they're all about the fighters. Mm. They know what to do to get the fighters back into contention. It's happened. It's happened to a few fighters before, and they've gotten back in. You know, I'm just. Can you still enjoy Dubai though? I know you've got a couple of days here. I know. I know I've got, well, we've we've got invited to some MTK of a couple of beds laid out for um, some zero gravity. Some zero yeah. gravity today. So I might go there and chill out. You know, and just um, I might have one or two cocktails just to. Well, I'm I'll, I'll join you. Just to I'll chill out you. and. Um, yeah, but I just want to say, it's not even that, really that I'm devastated, I'm just, I'm more embarrassed mm. because, I'm just embarrassed of myself because I know what I can do, I know what I'm capable of doing, everybody knows what I'm capable of doing. And last night, you know, you're going to have all these assholes on Twitter talking shit and all, you know, it, it's just, I know the calibre of fighter I am. That was just a bad night mm. and I'll be straight back in. So I just, just want to let my fans know that anybody that follows me, this isn't the end. It's nowhere near the end. It was just a bad night. Simple as that. If you watch the fight back, you can even see it. So um, there was an argument even that, you know, there was a couple of rounds mm. there where obviously the judges were looking for him scoring the cleaner headshots, but I was controlling the ring and I was banging into the body, but that's not what they were looking for. It was just unfortunate. Referee spoiled it as well there's me full of excuses but that's just what's on my mind right now mm -hmm. so um yeah I'll, do, I'll leave it at that before i, I keep rambling on and uh andy thanks very much for no your, thank you for like i said i appreciate you giving yeah. me your time here this afternoon so let's go and have some cocktails mate you deserve yeah. it <laughs> all right my man yeah thank you thanks very much thanks tj